What's up guys, PJ here from 3D Printing Canada. Today in front of me I have the new Micro Swiss all metal hot end for CR6 SE printers. Now this will also work on things like the CR Smart, anything that carries that style hot end. Let's get on to that build video. So we're gonna start with taking off the fan shroud. Now this isn't a CR6, it's a CR Smart, but it takes the same hot end. So we'll start by disassembling the old hot end. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disassemble the hot end completely from here. And we're gonna turn the printer on. So we'll remove the sock from the hot block there. Now I'm gonna heat it up so I can remove the Bowden tube from the push fitting. After it's heated up, you're gonna to wanna to take out your clip. Now, sometimes you can get away with this, sometimes you can't. You push down and you can pull the Bowden tube out, but in our case, we're not gonna be able to do that. We're gonna to have to get, now I believe this would still be a 10 mil wrench, yep and we're gonna have to unscrew the push fitting this way. Now we pull that Bowden tube out. You can see this one already started to have some problems. So this is a major problem with most non all metal hot ends is over time the tube lifts away and you end up with the tube moving away and filament getting where it shouldn't be. Now that we have the hot end and tube disassembled. I will be taking a 1.5 millimeter driver, releasing the set screw. We'll wait till that cools down a little. And our thermistor as well. We'll take the fan off. So first in front of us, we have your heat sink, compression O-ring, compression nut, and heat break. Our heater block, our silicone sock for the heater block, and our 0.4 micro Swiss nozzle. Are some tools, set screws, and extra compression O-ring fitting. Now here we have a side-by-side -side comparison of the Creality hot end versus the micro Swiss all metal hot end. Okay, so for the next step, I like to assemble the hot end heat break and nozzle without it being attached to the heat sink yet. This is just a personal preference. I tend to do it just because I don't want to damage or ever bend the thin part of your heat break. So the first thing I do is I go ahead and I take the Micro Swiss heat break. I make sure your screws are facing up like that with the heads on the bottom. Go ahead and thread that heat break in there. Now I always have my adjustable wrench handy, a seven mil wrench. I grab the block like so, seven mil wrench on there, and an extra little tighten. Okay, now it's not hot yet, so we haven't heat tightened yet. Now, because we like to use 0.6 around here a little bit faster, you can still get detail out of a 0.6, but print a lot faster, maybe less outlines. So we're gonna go ahead and use the Micro Swiss nozzle. Personally here in the shop, I only use Micro Swiss with Micro Swiss. I don't like to use other MK8 nozzles. I don't think the machining is done as well. I have seen some clone nozzles go into Micro Swiss blocks and have leakage. So if that's the case, you've probably just got a bad nozzle. It wouldn't be the Micro Swiss. Their machining is very precise. So now you're gonna wanna go ahead and thread that nozzle in like so. Go ahead and take your adjustable wrench again. Now don't overdo this because you can snap nozzles just like you can on any hot end. Now go ahead and give that an extra little tighten, not too much. Next step I like to take now is I take my heater cartridge and thermistor and install them. Now Micro Swiss really did a good job on this one. 
they did a dual set screw for the thermistor. Now, anytime you're tightening down a thermistor, guys, I want you to keep this in mind, or a heater cartridge, don't over tighten them. So once it's snug in there, that's good because what happens is if you squeeze too tight with those set screws, you're gonna damage your thermistor. We don't wanna do that. Same with the heat block, they're gonna expand. So once it's tight and it's not just moving around freely, you're good. I'll just tighten down a little, make sure it's lined up properly. Give it a little tighten, and that's all. Next step I like to do, again, why I don't put it on the heat sink yet, is I like to do my heat tighten or nozzle changes this way. Uh, reason being, again, I don't want to damage in my heat break or anything like that, so I even change my nozzles this way. Yeah, it might take five or 10 more minutes, but that five or 10 more minutes can save you money in the long run. So what I'm gonna do is make sure I get my fans out of the way so they're not interfering with the heater block and potentially melting a fan or something. So if you're gonna do it my way, guys, this is uh, just be a little cautious of that. Now we have it out in the open. We'll turn the printer on. Now, when I heat tighten, I like to do it at the printer's maximum temperature. Now, I don't recommend printing over 300 degrees uh, on these type of hot ends. Uh, but they will handle it. Now, you definitely want to heat up at your printer's maximum temperature. So your, most printers will do about 260. So I'm gonna heat this one up to 260. This goes for any printer, but Micro Swiss is uh, really good for the way they've designed their products and you can heat tighten them really easy. Now, personally, I like to, this printer is disassembled because we are actually installing the whole thing. But if your heat sink is on the printer, I like to undo the set screw and take my whole heater block, heat break, and nozzle out. The reason being is I'm not gonna damage or twist anything trying to get an adjustable wrench under the printer and making myself uncomfortable. So now that I've got the printer heated up to its maximum temperature, which is 260, you wanna go ahead, Micro Swiss uses a seven mil on their heat break and their wrench or excuse me, their heat break and their nozzle. So what I like to do is take an adjustable wrench once you're heated up. Now your printer will probably thermal run away unless you're able to do this step quick enough. So as you can see, the heat break is installed as well as the nozzle. It is very important with Micro Swiss to make sure you go ahead and thread the heat break down if you're just installing it for the first time all the way to the hot block then the nozzle goes in. You can pre-tighten them before you heat tighten them. So what I do is I get that on there quickly at 260 and I just give an extra little tighten. There we go, now I know those two are not gonna come unseparated while I'm printing. Also bear in mind, if you're running a direct drive, you need to set your retractions to two and lower. If you're running a Bowden tube, they will lower a little bit with this hot end compared to say you're, say you're running six or five millimeters of retraction. As you're first starting, try and run it at around you know, four to 4.5 millimeters of retraction. So after you've heat tightened your hot block and nozzle, what I want you guys to do is let it cool down because you definitely could burn yourself in this process. While we're waiting, uh, for it to cool down. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit so I don't burn myself. And I'm gonna install the heat sink to the pressure plate for the auto bed leveling. You're just gonna take your old hardware that Creality has provided. You're gonna take, now make sure your heat sink has the set screw facing out so you can put your throat, sorry, your heat break and your hot block back into the printer. So I'm gonna start by getting one of the screws ready on my driver so I'm not waiting. I like to hold it with my finger to make it easier and I don't drop it. We're gonna go ahead and put some Capricorn tubing on this printer. Now the TL is more tolerant so you could potentially print some flexibles on it. If you have the right extruder uh, running a Bowden tube, it still is possible. We also carry the excess as well, which is even more tolerant than the inner diameter and handles higher temperatures up to 260. Also even better for printing flexible materials. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take our old piece of tube and I'm gonna match up the length. I'm going to cut it. 
So now you want to take that pressure fitting, install it in the top of the heat sink like so. And then we'll thread the nut down onto the heat sink. Not all the way. I'll insert the Bowden tube till it reaches, till you feel it hit, basically comes down to here. Till you feel it bottom out. And we'll go ahead and we will tighten down. I can only assume they would use a 10 mil. Yep, they did. I really like this system of holding the tube and it seems uh, pretty cool and innovative. You never really see uh, this style. Okay, I'm not gonna over tighten it because I'm actually really liking this new innovation from Micro Swiss. Now I'm sure we see things like this in plumbing and stuff like that, but to see something like this move over to a 3D printer where now look at that, that's locked in there. That's, that's not coming out. And again, guys, it doesn't reach all the way down to your nozzle anymore being all metal. So I'm actually really impressed with this new innovation from Micro Swiss. I'm gonna take my set screw for the heat sink. I'm gonna take my adjust or my seven mil wrench here to help guide this in because mine's still hot. You don't have to do it this way if you let it cool down, which I highly recommend. Now I'm gonna use my seven mil wrench to hold this in place while I secure the set screw. Now remember, make sure you use a good Allen wrench while doing this. Smaller set sco screws tend to strip easier. So again, don't try to over crank that down. Now we're uh, rounding the bend here to the end and we're just gonna take our fan and this little air duct that uh, Creality has designed. And I'll put the screws through the top of my fan. And then for the wire clip here, I'll reinstall it. And then the two mil driver and just re-thread these back down into the micro Swiss heat sink. Again, don't over tighten. You are threading against plastic. You could potentially crack something. We don't want that to happen. And last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and take our silicone sock. Slide that puppy on. Okay, next we'll take the Bowden tube we had cut, reinstall it into Creality's Titan Style Extruder. Pop that C-clip in to hold it in place, make sure it's pushed all the way back. And then the final step will be just to reinstall our fan shroud. Two in the top and one in the back on this printer. Okay guys, and we're back. Now that we've installed our Micro Swiss CR6 all metal hot end on this CR Smart, I'm gonna take it out and do some test prints on it and see how it runs. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, leave us some comments in the bottom there and we'll see you in the next video.